the family welcome back to larry's anything goes hopefully you guys are having a great and exceptional day all right let's get into it uh, don't forget i'll be going live tomorrow on facebook and youtube so look up larry's anything goes llc i'll be talking about a variety of things but i think i might just go more in depth and we're talking about what men want and what women want so matter of fact let me um put that down let me um email that to myself right now before I forget uh, because there, there's been two lists and for the most part these lists are comical about what men want, um, what men, who men shouldn't date and who women should date shouldn't date, um, but either way, I mean, because I'm not trying to make this a dating channel, but sometimes you just got to add a little humor and comedy into or, or what they call entertainment slash infotainment into the mix because just doing the same old, same old can, you know Make it makes life stale and it definitely makes things stale on the internet. So let's just call call it like it is. All right. So, anyways, today's word of the day. Hold on a second. Let me um send this to myself. Next one topic. Black men. Cool. All right. Cool. So we got that down. All righty, simple and to the point. All right, so today's word of the day is, I just had it, schematic. S-C-H-E-M-A-T-I-C. Relating to or in the form of a, a scheme or a diagram, um, a structural diagram or, or of an electrical or mechanical system. And the reason why I chose this word today is because we all have things that we want in this life. We all have visions that we have in this life for ourselves, for our families, uh, for our friends, you know, but a lot of times we can't um, explain it. A lot of times I've noticed people's communication skills. A lot of times are just terrible. Mine can be good and mine can be terrible as well um, because I'm a the, the kind of thinker I am. I'm just like, hey, I'm going to give it to you in a bullet format. I'm not going to give it to you in the not going to give it into you three words, but I'm not going to give go into a long dissertation either. A lot of people that I have encounters with on a day to day basis when they're trying to explain something to me, they either give me three words or they they give me a long dissertation to where it's like okay you give you're going too far into the woods let's keep it as black and white as possible it's not like we're we're talking about um quantum physics or mechanical engineering and we're not talking about designing a bridge or a commercial structure we're talking about policy we're talking about um investments we're talking about things of that nature but a lot of times people especially where i'm from in the dmv area people want to sound way more intelligent than they actually are because always in a, they have the superficial mindset the superficial culture of always trying to impress people and um for me it's just like don't try to do that unless you're trying to say hey by me knowing xyz and if you and i can pair notes or if you and i can um team up with one another then we can make some money moves together that's the kind of conversation i want to have but nine times out of ten especially in the dmv area when i'm having an encounter with somebody it's always about them bra either dry begging or the um they're bragging about something and either way i just get bored with the conversation in general and i walk away so i leave it at that but anyways, back to the word at hand, we all need to be able to draw out a structural um, diagram in order for a diagram in order for us to see where we are now and where we want to be in the future. You know, where we see our family and friends now and where we hope to see them in the future. But how are we going to get them there? The one, two, three, four process. And every now and then you might have to go back to two or one. But then you got to say to yourself, OK, if that does happen hypothetically, how can I get back to three or four? That, that specific level you know it's like um i so when i and i was in, i spent five years in high school because my first year in high school i just screwed around i didn't care and even like when it comes to structural education nowadays i've never been that big of a fan of it because especially in the information age now a lot of times most of these classes that, that students have to take has nothing to do with their day-to-day -day, has nothing to do with even the um has nothing to do with the actual um specific uh, major that they're in school for and that's the beautiful thing about trade school like the the curriculum of trade school has everything that i don't and i don't care if it's if you're going to be a cdl driver a plumber electrician um you know anything of that nature carpenter you're you're, you're taking you're being taught by an instructor who has experience who is certified and then you're being taught by an instructor who's going to bring out real everyday life examples so that you can relate because this is the field that you're going into you know, that's why when it comes to people going to law school and medical school, you know, 
it's probably much more v rigorous given the fact that you had to go through four years of of, of regular um edu general um college education then you have to do another year to two years of medical school or law school it's because your that is dedicated towards you actually dealing with your day-to-day -day. that is dedicated towards you what you're going to be working on and whatnot, you know, whether it's in a legal profession or the medical profession. And that's why I always commend the IT, IT corporations who have developed their own online institutions because they've learned that, hey, we don't care about people with degrees anymore. We care about people that can actually um, has the right mindset to um, bring forth the great ideas and implementation when it comes to what we do as an IT or um, tech organization. You know, like if you ever see the movie The Internship with Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson, um, they didn't have a major degree. And a lot of the kids that were in the internship, um, cause of, there was no age requirement to be a part of the internship, but you just had to be in school. So they enrolled themselves into an online university. However, um, the, the, pe the kids that they were competing with, most of them came from, um, Ivy league schools, but, um, but the whole thing is, is like, okay, great. You have, you have this, I, um, Ivy league school degree training, et cetera, and so forth. However, can you can you do the basics in regards to working at the help desk? Can you do the can what kind of ideas do you bring to the company? Can you create an app that actually has an impact on other people's lives? Like the the part of the um the internship was, hey, what kind of business? The last task for them during the internship was, what kind of business can you bring to Google? Because that basically were internships at Google, and what so what kind of business can you bring to Google? You know, we want you to go to small businesses around the um, Bay Area. Um, that don't have much of a following on Google or on the internet anywhere and show them what, what Google can do for them if they sign a contract with us and um, and you can basically work and, and um, make work with this small business and show them that the potential of how they can by um, allowing them allowing them to partner with Google and having them have develop more of an online presence, they'll be able to generate more business. And if they wanted to grow, that they could actually turn to um, open up one or two more businesses, or potentially franchise that they get there because the food, the the business, the services, or the, um, or the products that they provide are so great that you can expansion, you can become a, an expansion team without even realizing it. And that was that was the whole thing. It's like, yeah, all these degrees might mean might might look make you look good on paper, but the internship shows what can you specifically do to make this organization much better, and what can you specifically do to show the world that hey, this this organization is not only about just making money, but it's about helping people um, get access to information and become better um, p stewards of the world, not just the United States, but of the world. So that's that's my uh, rant on that one. Um, so do your best to ensure that you have some sort of schematic about, for yourself and others in order for you to have a better uh, day and a better future. Today's quote of the day is by Wiz Khalifa. He says, I've done a lot of work to get where I'm at, but I have to go, I have to keep working. And I could not agree with that statement more because that's one thing I always say that you have a lot of people that they played the a lottery. And I, I played a lottery every now and then too. But you have a lot of people who play the lottery and um, they say, if I get all this money, I'm never going to have to work again. But that is the worst mindset to have because that's why I'm nine times out of 10, not meaning 99% of the people who win the lottery, uh, they end up broke again because they don't want to, they don't want to work hard in regards to money management. Okay. The ultimate money move is okay. If I get a lot of money, um, yeah, I want to spoil myself and I might want to spoil certain others around me. But if you want it to last, at least till the day you die, and if you have kids, if you want it to last for them in the future and, and to get them on the right mindset of how money management works, investments work, assets work, um, things of that nature, then you have to constantly educate yourself um, on a regular basis. You can't just sit back and relax and you know, lounge out at the beach and get drunk and high or whatever the heck you want to do and think everything's going to be all right. I mean, heck. Um, great example, Rodney King, rest in peace, um, and, rest, and rest in peace of Richard Roundtree. He passed away last night, 81 years old, didn't realize he was that old. The first chef, um, very classy, elegant, and intelligent black man, nothing but love and respect to him. So rest in peace to Richard Roundtree. I should have did the quote by Richard Roundtree, but I'll do that tomorrow. But, um, but yeah, anyways, long story short, you want to be able to um, last a whole lot longer so that you can, um, because like I said, just lounging out, one, that gets boring, um, two, and that's why, I mean, that's why you even see people like as old as Bill Gates is. I think if Steve Jobs is, was still alive, he would still be working. 
is, you know, Mark Zuckerberg or Mark Cuban, um, Elon Musk, whether you like these people or you don't like these people, they're still working. Now, and uh, now whether they're doing good or bad, that's a different story, but they're still working. A lot of times it's still working on the things that make them passionate, you know, that they're passionate about. I was talking about Jim Carrey, stop acting because he's just pursuing things that he's passionate about in his life. And he's more of a philanthropist now. And that's the thing, like me personally, I would do the same thing. I would be chase more things that I'm passionate about um, if I, if I won the lottery and not just lounge out in front of a TV and you know, on a beach and what I, I would get bored out of my mind. You know, that's why, unfortunately, a lot of people who, who, um, do the quote unquote retirement retirement, meaning that not having a job, not having nothing to do end up dying a lot sooner sometimes because they don't have anything going on in their life. They're not occupied. You have to be, everybody was meant to be occupied in some sort of way. Even during the pandemic, when, you know, the first lockdown, lockdown, where we couldn't really go out except go to the grocery store, you know, you have to abide. That was one of the most productive times in my life because I didn't have, have to be in the office. I did not have to attend a thousand meetings. I was able to engage with people outside of the world that I work in. I was able to develop a, another, yet a better mindset because of not having to do the same old mundane day to day, get up at 430, get, you know, beat, fight traffic, um, sit in the office and, um, you know, be, be secluded and not be able to enjoy, like I've enjoyed being in my house more. I've enjoyed taking more trips. I've enjoyed engaging with other kinds of people that have the same economic mindset that I have, you know, shout out to EYL University, shout out to by the hood university, shout out to, um, uh, the black business school. These are things that I was able to think, you know, I was I was already thinking outside of the box before the pandemic, but the pandemic be, uh, made me even um, appreciate life even more so, especially being able to appreciate being able to travel and go places. So, you know, that that was a, that was the main thing. So that that's why it's, I, get, I really get bored around people that just had this mundane mindset of just want to talk about stuff that happened 20 years ago, want to brag about stuff that has nothing to do with making them or me better. Um, and being, or be, being around people that just, um, are so superficial that, um, they just, like I said, I, I get bored with people really easily, unfortunately, because of, because of how people are people more, so many people are impressed by a size of a car and a house than they are the size of somebody's um, heart or the size of, um, the amount of people that they've helped, you know, it's, you know, as, as far as the size, the number, the amount of people that they've helped. And not even just from a financial standpoint, but just passing down a big a part of assets is relationships, pa passing down information, you know, learn being around people that you can learn from. And a lot of times people just want to gossip about nonsense, but I'll leave it at that. Anyways, do the great thief things, family. Like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day. Do your best to um, make money moves or, you, or you're, you're going to liberal like a fool, but do your best to make your schematic in order for you to become a better person, in order for you to ensure that, um, you know, you have a plan in place because what if you are one of these lucky people that are in the paper that ends up winning the lottery? What are you going to do with it? Put that in the comment section, you know, and anything outside of buy myself a house and buy myself a car or a boat or a motorcycle. That's so mundane. What are you really going to do with it? What, what is the business plan? What is the investment plan? Because that's the only way you're going to keep it. Okay. That, that there's no, uh, you could pay off your mortgage. You could pay off mortgages. Something eventually in the house is going to break down. That's why the, the whole idea of getting an overpriced house a lot of times is ridiculous for regular working people, but I'll leave it at that. Um, but, you know, a car is going to break down eventually, you know. So, yeah, and if you're able to buy a car and not have a car payment, I'm 40 years old. I never had a car payment, you know, knock on wood. But I never had a car payment. So to be able to have a vehicle, that means you're not paying anything on that. To be able to have a house that you don't have a mortgage on, that means you're not paying on that. But you got to pay, unless you live in West Virginia, you have to pay the personal property taxes and insurance on the property. But if something breaks down, can you cover it? You know, that's why I always say, if I win the lottery, I'm going to just do work that matters to me. Things that I'm passionate about. But I'm still going to invest in, uh, in asset classes like real estate, uh, the stock market. Um, I already know the kind of turnkey businesses I would buy um, parking lots, um, pu public storage facilities, you know, mop, the mom and pop variety, varieties, um, possibly gas stations, you know, th those turnkey businesses, that's not going to require me to have that much involvement in it and things of that nature. Heck, maybe even warehouse facilities where people have to, um, store, store their um, products and whatnot. So I'm to think of once again, it's a turnkey business and not going to require me to be there, um, 24 seven. You know, but it's a facility that people would um, lease in order for them to store their products. 
So these are things. And if you own, own assets like these with no mortgages on it, hey, there it is. There's the profits and whatnot. And then, of course, when it comes to the tax man, that's what you have a CPA for as far as to figure out your best strategy so you don't have to pay as much in taxes. But I leave it at that. That's what I would do if I won the lottery. All right. But let me know what you would do. So on that note, do the great thief things. Like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day. And as I always say, make money moves or you're going to live like a fool. Take